so network file system or NFS in a Docker environment. That's what we're going to see in this video. If you want to learn more, stick with me. Hello, what's up guys, Medium Guy here and in this video we're going to see how to serve a network file system as a Docker container with a Docker Compose file. So we're going to later see how to utilize it as clients and many options that we can configure our NFS server. So right before I start this video, please don't forget to watch other videos on my channel where I'm sure you'll find many more videos about other cool technologies. So without any delay, let's get down to work. So as it is shown in this picture, this is a total overview of how NFS server and the clients work. So right over here, we've got a server with one or more disks attached to it. And actually it is going to act as the NFS server. So basically what NFS server does is that it exposes those disks on the network level to the clients that can connect to the NFS server and utilize that disk that is only attached to the NFS server. So right over here, we've got many clients that are connected to the NFS server and actually like for example, if they are authorized to mount the same path on the NFS server, the same file system will be shared among the both clients. And actually, for example, these two clients will be sharing files to each other through storing their files on the NFS server. So basically, NFS is a standard method to share storages over network between many clients and it is used in many architectures and actually it will be a very handy skill to have in your resume. So right over here I've got the docker hub page for the image that I'm going to use that is created by it's the network slash NFS server Alpine which is actually a NFS version 4 server running on Alpine Linux. So on the tags section you can actually see all the tags that are available on this image and use it depending on your use case. So in order to give this a test, I'm going to switch to the terminal and over here I'll hit LS and you can see that I've created a Docker Compose file that will actually utilize the same image and will actually act as the NFS server. So right now I'm on a server that is running on my local network and has some storage attached to it. So actually I'll be using this NFS server that will create shortly as a container and mount it on my local laptop and try to utilize its file server, create things, delete things and actually check that it is applying on the main server itself. So I'm going to nano the docker compose file over here you can see that I've got only one service that is using the exact same image with the tag latest and I've passed the privileged as true so if I go to the documentation so as we can see over here the privilege escalation option is required for this image to actually work so when we pass the privilege mode to true or we can pass the sysadmin capability in order to enable this feature so right over here as you can see we can either set the privilege to true or we can use the cap add option and add the sysadmin and set pcap capabilities to the container that will be created. So going back to the docker compose file over here, as you can see, I've got a volume mounted, which is dot slash shared to slash shared inside the container. And on the environment variables section, I've got an environment variable, which is shared directory and I've passed slash shared as exactly like the volume that I've mapped to inside the container. So basically these values should be the same. So your files will be actually persisted and will be available on the next uses. So I've got some other environment variables that will come back shortly. And over here on the port section, I've got only one port that is mapped to exactly same port inside the container. And actually it is the port that the NFS server will be exposed to outside the container and on the network level to the other machines. 
So I'll hit Control X to get out of the Nano and I'll say MKDIR shared to create the directory that will be mapped to inside the container and if I say docker compose up dash d I should be able to see the network that will be created and a container attaching to that network and making possible the port forwarding on my network level so I'll say docker compose ps to see the containers that have been created by this docker compose file and as I can see the state is up and my desired port is mapped to exactly same inside the container also by hitting docker compose logs dash f to follow and dash dash tail to grab the latest 100 lines and as you can see things looking normal and the shared directory is exported out of this nfs server so basically on the nfs server normally we'll have a file on the etc exports that will hold all the directories that the nfs server is allowed to expose on the network level so i'll hit ctrl c I'll say docker exec dash it to run the tty in the interactive mode and i'll pass the container name and the bash to create a bash session inside the container so if i say cat slash etc exports you can see that the slash shared with some nfs standard options is actually defined to the nfs server to expose it on the network level so right now my nfs server is up and running and ready to be utilized by the clients so on the client side the prerequisite to actually mount nfs file systems is that we have the nfs common package installed in our operating system so i'll say sudo apt install nfs dash common so actually i've already installed it and i won't be running this command again so i'll hit ctrl c and in order to mount the file system from the nfs server i'm going to create a directory on the slash mnt so i'll say mkdir nfs so i get some permission error and i'll say sudo mkdir nfs if i hit ls you can see that the directory is created if i hit ls dash la you can see the newly created directory is owned by the root user so i'll say sudo chown i'll pass 1000 as the user id and 1000 as the group id as it is the user and group that i am logged in with and lastly i'll pass the nfs directory as the input and if i hit ls-la again i can see that my current user now owns this directory so in order to mount the nfs file system i'm actually going to use the mount.nfs4 that is actually provided by the nfs common that we just installed and i'll pass dash v to output the debugging logs also and i'll pass the server ip address that the nfs is running on and i'll pass slash as the directory on the nfs server to be mounted on my mount point which is slash mnt slash nfs that we just created so if i hit enter i expect things to work correctly and if i hit ls i'll move inside the nfs directory hit ls again and i'll try to hit mkdir test to create a test directory i'll hit ls the directory is created successfully and if i say nano test file.txt i'll hit enter and try to pass in some content and i'll hit save and exit so if i hit ls test you can see that the file is created and if i go to the server i'll hit ctrl d to exit the bash session and if i hit ls i'll go to the shared directory ls again the test directory exists over here and if i cd into test ls and nano the file.txt as you can see it is exactly the same that i just created and modified on the client side so basically right now if two clients mount exactly the same directory on their pcs they'll be actually able to store and fetch files on the same nfs server and as a result they'll be actually sharing files 
among each other so right now the problem with this method of mounting is that whenever we restart our machine the mounting will be actually get removed and actually we'll have to mount the nfs file system again so i'll go back a directory and by using the sudo u mount to unmount the nfs file system and i'll pass nfs so the mounted nfs file system is now unmounted from my client machine and in order to persist the mounting i'm going to say sudo nano slash etc fs tab so basically this is the file that we define our persistent mount points that we want our operating system to actually mount these file systems whenever it gets booted and up and running so actually i'm going to add a line and as you can see each line represents a file system so for example by default i have a file system that is mounted to slash which is the root directory of my client machine and the type is ext4 and some other options that we can define based on our use cases so i don't have anything to do with the existing lines and over here i'm going to paste this line so basically it defines the ip address of the nfs server on the slash file system mounted to the slash mnt nfs directory and the mount type is nfs with these options right over here so if i save and exit the nano and i'll say sudo mount slash mnt nfs i'll hit enter and my nfs file system is successfully mounted on my client machine and if i hit ls cd into nfs and i've got exactly the same things that i had before so as the last point if i move back to the documentations over here we've got some other environment variables that we can pass so basically by passing read only we'll be actually defining our nfs share to be mounted as read only and no clients will be able to actually write to that file system and we can pass the sync as true which will cause the exports file on the nfs server to contain a sync instead of async and finally the permitted environment variable for which we can provide a ip address and by passing this environment variable only the ip addresses in the given range will be able to actually mount the nfs file system so in order to give a test I'll go back to the docker compose file over here and if I nano the docker compose file I'll just try to uncomment the read only environment variable and if I say docker compose down and docker compose up dash d again my nfs server will be restarted with the new configurations and over here on the client side I'll say sudo umount slash mnt nfs so I get the error saying that the device is busy and that is because i'm inside the nfs directory and if i move up a directory and hit the sudo u mount again my previously mounted nfs file system will be unmounted and again i'll say sudo mount slash mnt nfs so right now i'm expecting not to be able to write to the file system so I'll move to the NFS directory and if I say mkdir I'll give it a name and as you can see I get the error that is saying cannot create directory because it is a read-only file system so again I'll move a directory back and I'll try to unmount the NFS file system and go back over here on the docker compose file again I'll try to uncomment the permitted environment variable also the sync environment variable i'll hit save exit and again try to restart the nfs servers container and again over here on the client side if i try to mount the same file system i should actually not be able to mount it and as a result i get the access denied by the server while mounting the file system so that's all for this video i hope you learned something new in this one and if you have any questions and any recommendations, 
of course go ahead and ask me in the comment section down below so basically the docker is not the recommended method to install the nfs server to actually be able to utilize all the features that is provided with nfs but actually you can install it using docker to actually be able to utilize the basic features that we saw in this video and if that is the use case for you, Docker is the easiest method to get up and running with the NFS server. So if you like the content, please don't forget to like and subscribe, which will help grow the channel and motivate me to create more free contents like this. So lastly, don't forget to learn new things each day. And with that, I hope to see you in the next video.